All right, it's my pleasure right now to be joined by the lead vocalist of the multi-platinum group, Vertical Horizon, Matt Scannell. Matt, great to see you, and uh, this is a great thing about your look. You look the same as you did two decades ago when you first hit it big, right? That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about the future back then when I shaved the head. I was like, I'm, I'm going to think about 2023, want to kind of keep it together. That's hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, everything you've done is great, but I had this orange and white CD, right? They kids, they had these things called CDs, man. And everything you want, I used to play that thing backwards and forwards. Every song on it was fantastic. It was not your debut, so to speak. You had grinded through a few before that, right? But how That's did right. everything come together on that that album? Uh, you know, it, it was it was an awful lot of work. Uh, years of touring uh, independently, trying to uh, grow our fan base around the country. And I uh, was living in New York City at the time. And so I started sort of trying to meet A&R people from the record labels uh, in, in New York City uh, and really was just constantly trying to see if there was any interest in that world. Um, so it was it was. It, it was so much uh, effort and luck and preparation and all these things. But then ultimately it was this, the songs. Um, I, I wrote, uh, I, I think I wrote somewhere around 65 to 80 songs uh, for that record. I can't really remember exactly, but it was just a constant thing. I, I, you know, I guess when you want something that badly, you are going to do everything you can to get it. Um, it doesn't mean that you will get it, but you're certainly going to put your best foot forward. And I feel like uh, we had been uh, preparing for that next step for a long time. And I think the confluence of events kind of uh, gave us the opportunity. Uh, but mostly, I think it was the songs. The songs were, were good songs, and, and, uh, and they've, they've, t they've stood the test of time, which is just astounding. Now, Matt, the first single was We Are, right? Yeah, you're right. It was. It was uh, the label didn't want us to, and I think rightly so, they didn't want us to go out of the gate with the, the poppier uh, songs. They wanted to try to, for us to lead with something a little heavier, um, a little bit m more, um, y you know, uh, I don't know, just a little less pop. Uh, don't uh, sell out bro let's go with the hard one for, kind of something like that or maybe know. i mean I, yeah. I i think it was a couple things i think they wanted to get the ball rolling they wanted to have the teams be functioning uh together uh, you know the, the the radio promo all that stuff maybe raise the, the the level of awareness a little bit with that song and then and then come back with with another song which i think even at the time we knew was probably going to be everything you want um but yeah, We Are was the first song. And it was a thrill for me. I grew up in Massachusetts, so it was a thrill for me. Uh, I listened to WBCN, uh, which was just, you know, one of the coolest stations in the world as far as I was concerned. Um, and, I, and I heard We Are on BCN, and it was just like, oh, my gosh, you know, just <laughs> what, a, what a joy, you know. Um, but yeah, We Are was the first single. Yeah, and it was a rock hit. Like you said, it got you on the radio, and it's still a solid opener to this day. I know you open with it pretty often. and Yeah, um, yeah. Everything you want, I heard you talk about that. So it was in the nighttime or something. Maybe you'd woken up, and you came up with the initial, uh, how the song starts, that melody, and some other things came together. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't happen infrequently. But uh, every now and again, there is a little, I'm singing a song in my mind as I'm sleeping in, in a dream or the bat, we, I turn on the radio in a dream and there'll be a song playing and I'll be like, oh man, I really like that song. And oftentimes it's not a song that I recognize. Um, and so I kind of then another part of my brain starts sort of, working its way into dreamland going, hey, wait a second, is this, is this something that, 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 uh, that, 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 the, 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 the you, we're, whatever, creating in this moment? Um, or is it just a, a Paul McCartney song 
that's being sung by somebody else with and being you know it's tr it's it's treated differently you know it's a it's a dance tune instead of like a song with a you know a piano and a vocal and sometimes it's that the the, the latter but every now and again it's the, it's the former and uh and then i sort of have to snap to it and try to pull myself out of that dream remember the thing and get it down you know write it down record it whatever and very often i'll listen back to my little you know used to be a little micro cassette recorder kids we used to have a uh, a little cassette recorder that was about this big smaller than your <laughs> phone and we would keep it by the bedside on the bedside table for just these types of, uh, of moments and so i'd record the the idea the, the the tragedy and perhaps the comedy of it all is that nine times out of ten in the morning you'd listen back to your genius idea and it's just a tired voice going mumbling, you know, incoherent, uh, you know, uh, 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 sounds and melodies. It's, 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 it's absolutely, you know, not something you can work from. Um, but in the case of everything you want, I, it was very, very clear. Uh, and in fact, I, I, I heard the, the little, um, the little ba 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 that bit that starts the song. I heard it in a dream and uh and i thought well this is th that's cool i that i i should remember that uh but i was really deep in sleep and so i thought well you'll just remember it in the morning and of course really the truth of the matter is with all this stuff is you never ever remember it in the morning it's gone within seconds if you don't actually get up to do it so a little while later yeah i i, I heard the chords and i don't have the guitar with me right now but the chords that start the song after that sort of mantra happens at the beginning of the song i heard those chords and then uh but i still was too too tired and too uh too too not in the mode to uh get up and write and uh so i uh, I'll just remember it tomorrow morning um but then the chorus came to me and and when i tell this story the the, the crazy truth of it all is that i heard the whole thing i mean i heard the lyrics, the you know, start to you know, he's everything you want, he's everything you need, et cetera, et cetera. Boom, all there. I heard the the drum part. I heard the guitar chords with the the the, the there's a, a G note, and for the guitar nerds out there, it's a, it's a G and a D note that are held on most of the chords throughout the rhythm guitar part of the. Sorry, this is probably too deep and in the weeds, but but it adds yeah. some tension. It adds it adds some. Uh, some, some tension to the gu guitar parts. Um, I heard this tension and I could feel this tension and I thought, well, that's part of the thing that makes this, that I feel that could make this thing cool. So I woke up, uh, got up and uh, and wrote the song and it really came together in a matter of, uh, of minutes. And uh, that's, that's stunning. I don't know how that happens. I'm so grateful to it. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's one of the most beautiful occurrences as a songwriter, um, because very often you have to really earn every syllable, uh, every moment, every second of the song is hard fought and hard won, uh, but, um, or hard lost as the case may be. But, uh, but with everything you want, it was, uh, it, it was kind of all just there for, for, for the taking, and I'm, and I'm grateful that I, I wrangled it. It was the most played song of the year in the year 2000. You go all the way to number one on Billboard, That not rock. I mean, the Hot 100, you're number one. Um, how is that? Because there are certainly artists who have sold millions and millions who have never gone number one with a single before. Yeah, I, I still... Um... Really, I, I have to credit the team at RCA Records. They were, they were, you know, champions of our of our band and really rooting for us uh, to to have success. And so they really, you know, they pushed all the buttons. They they, you know, I oftentimes think of it as being like, uh, you know, the, the 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 guy at the circus who gets shot out of the cannon, you know. <laughs> We're, we got, you know, we were in there ready to go. We're, I wonder if they're going to shoot us out. Yep, they're shooting us out of the cannon. And then all of a sudden we're sailing off into the great blue yonder, wild blue yonder. Um, but, but uh, yeah, it, it, the, the thing that was perhaps the, the most sweet about that, although everything about it really was sweet, was that it took the longest time 
at the, at the time, I'm not sure if this record has been beaten, but my understanding is it was the single that took the longest time to reach number one. So we were like the little engine that could, you know, just every week, just trying to make it another step up the hill. Um, and uh, as a result, you know, it, 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 it created this, this huge story. It wasn't just up to number one and then gone the next week. It was, it was something that really sort of grew. And, and, and the, the beautiful thing, I actually get chills even just when I talk about it now, the beautiful thing is that that song seems to really be uh, ingrained in the sort of the ether of our culture, the ether, uh, of, frankly, of, 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 you know, other cultures all around the world. We just, we just got back, back from Asia. We were playing shows over there and, and not just that song, but, 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 but that song certainly, um, is, is in the air out there as well. And that's, uh, it's, it's brilliant. You know, it, it changed my life fundamentally. And, and one, one other thing, to make a long answer longer, um, I I am so um, grateful that I love this song that you know that song as much as I do. I you know I I I've I've met other artists along on my journey who who kind of rankle. Uh, um, I think that's the word. They kind of they cringe uh, at the at the at the thought or at the sound of of their you know, their hit or their hits. And um, and I don't I don't I'm. I'm I'm super psyched. Like if I'm in the grocery store and I hear everything you want on the, on the PA, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm singing along air vocaling, you know, with my best, like, you know, rock <laughs> guy move. And the, you know, I've got a bag of potato chips and like some lettuce and stuff. And I'm like singing into the lettuce, like a fool. But, <laughs> uh, but I love that song. I, I, I deeply love that song. And partly I think that's because of the, the early times with the the other independent records that we made, I learned my lesson then uh, that if you if you're not completely in love with a song, if you don't think it's the best thing it can be, then don't put it on a record because people are going to be standing down front at your show all night long asking you to play that song that you don't like. Um, so fortunately, I learned that lesson the first time, and and uh, and now I get to just put songs on that I believe in that we can play thousands and thousands of times moving forward. Well, I was going to bring it up, but your buddy Richard Marks played the casino next door in mm -hmm. late April, and yep. he gets out there and he says, "I've met people who have hits that don't want to play their hits," and I'm like, "What yeah. the hell is wrong with you?" <laughs> you know? Well, and so, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we he and I talked a lot about about just that, and I think on on. on well, fortunately for us, if I can, you know, Richard and I are, 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 are very, very close friends. Our careers paths have been wildly different and he's had an incredible uh, amount of success, deservedly so. Um, but if I can be so bold as to put the two of us as in a camp, um, one of the things I think that, are, that, 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 that makes it um, more plausible for us to love those songs and, and kind of in, and continue to embrace them uh, is that we, we generally, we wrote those songs either by ourselves or with maybe one other person. Um, uh, I think that, you know, there are artists, many, many artists out there who were sort of handed a song uh, written by somebody else. These were not his or her words. They, they, this was not a sentiment that maybe they even felt, but but the, their voice suited, according to powers that be, their voice suited this song, and so therefore here's your next single. Now, I think that could be that could be kind of challenging. At the same time, look, if you're a singer or a songwriter and you've had success, you've won. So like, it doesn't matter what it is. You, I feel like we all need to find the gratitude inside of us. Uh, and recognize how incredibly rare uh, it is to to be in the position of singing songs that people want to hear, and that should be that should be good enough, you know. The other songs, uh, "You're a God." Did, did you get a chance to hang out with Tiffany Amber Thiessen, or that was? Uh... <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did, and we we've, we've become friends, and we we haven't seen each other that, that much lately. But every now and again, we'll just get together and say, you know, hi, grab a meal or something. She's great um uh, terrific person amazing person um and and it was really fun on the the day of the shoot uh for the video i was there were a couple moments i you know i joke around about this but there were a couple moments where where i was going to have to do something without my guitar 
uh, and my guitar is is my armor, right? It it uh, it is uh, my shield. It protects me from uh, uh, anything. And when I walk on stage with my guitar on, I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like kind of invincible. Take that guitar away, and I start to wither and sort of, you know, shrink. And <laughs> excuse me, I uh, the directors wanted me to do some acty bits and i definitely put acting in in in, in major parentheses <laughs> but i spoke with tiffany and she you know I, I said i'm so nervous to do anything in front of the camera without my guitar etc and, and she just was so lovely and like oh no you're gonna be great you this is what you should think of and like the, look at the, one of the things she said which you know, stuck with me all my life is look at the camera uh like it's your friend look look into the lens like it's one of your good friends and then, and in fact if you want to just think about your friends behind the lens like like you're talking to the, you know the people who are ultimately going to be seeing this or acting for the people who are going to be seeing this and she's great she's fabulous i, I i'm a huge fan I, and uh, it was a total privilege and and wonder sorry i don't know if you can hear that but uh there's <laughs> commotion out there but um uh yeah she she was just a, a total joy to have and and uh, and work with on that on that video. It's great. It's great. Yeah, great song, great rocking song, and I guess a relief, Thanks. right, to say, okay, we followed up everything you want, and we are with another one, right? So. Yeah, yeah. You know, and in fairness, you, you're a god didn't didn't um, didn't didn't ra rise to the heights that that everything you wanted, but that's one of those classic things. Like once you've gone up to number one, you know. You gotta, you gotta find. Uh, 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 you need, you need to learn to be thankful for less than number one. And so, your God did its best. You know, it did its <laughs> little, little engine it could bit, and it, it petered out before, before number one. But you know, w one of the things that's that's still to the stage is so lovely about that song is the absolute joy that people, you know, have singing along with us on that song. I mean, it's just. It's astounding. I, I, you know, I, I still can't get over it. I, I, and again, I love that song. So thank goodness, right? You know, yeah, great stuff. So, um, gray sky, uh, gray sky morning, best I ever had. Um, uh, you know, a real uh, melancholy, uh, but beautiful and um, hypnotic, uh, mm. and then. Like you said, um, we kind of alluded to, and then it has a second life. The country star, Gary Allen, he takes it. Yep. From what I read, he had a lot of personal uh, turmoil in his life with his late wife, I believe. And so that song connects with him. And so that's the the, the, the gift that keeps giving, right? Well, it, it, it certainly is. And, and I've always said, and I, I said to Gary, even like I would, I every time I talk about it, I feel... Uh, conflicted because I desperately wish that Gary had never been in a position to need that song. I, you know, it goes without saying that, that, uh, it's, 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 it's not just bittersweet. It's tragic that that song, uh, resonated for him the way it did. But having said that, uh, what, a, what, a what a, a beautiful, thing for that song to perhaps provide some healing for him and to um to then go out into into his live shows and on his his record um out into the ether and maybe impact some people and people's lives who wouldn't have heard it before um yeah that that, that was a that was an interesting one uh, a unique set of circumstances strange to be to feel the the jump up and down joy of having that song become successful, be kind of tempered or that his version of that song, I should say, becoming successful to be tempered by this, this, this tragic, you know, absolute tragedy. So uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm grateful to him. Uh, but I always sort of feel like I wish, I wish it hadn't happened. And so I don't know. I, I feel, I feel kind of yeah. conflicted talking about it but but i'm um you know I, again another song right like when i wrote that song jock i i i had to listen through my record collection i was like i, I is this somebody else's thing like the melody was so i mean i'm sorry like 
I, I feel like I try, I feel like I can talk about this because it's it wasn't a terribly active um, pursuit on my part. It was receptive. I I heard it. It just sort of came to me, right? So when I say I think it's an absolutely beautiful melody, like it's almost like I just turned it on the radio. I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm here on the piano. Oh, no, that's not it. You know, da, 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 da. you know, that's not it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yes, we got it. No, no, no. It was there and just happened. So, uh, yeah, amazing. I love that song. Love well, that. you mentioned Paul McCartney earlier, and, I, and I'd watched an interview he did. Um, yep. Being mentioned with, with Paul McCartney, that's great, too, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I totally belong in that group. No problem. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, he talked about yesterday, and I think he heard mm. the dun, 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 in his head when he was sleeping, and then he wrote the next day, and he thought, certainly somebody wrote this before me. This isn't yeah. mine. And then, like, yeah. two or three weeks later, he said, well, I guess it is mine. You know, he took yeah, it for yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the biggest songs ever, most covered, oh, man. you know. So I think so, I, I, there's a real argument to be made that that's the, that's the best song ever written. I, I think... Yeah, for me, I think that's probably the greatest song ever written. And and he's a, a tremendous talent. I mean, I, I've seen him many times at this point. And, for, you know, for a while he was playing uh, 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 Let It Be and... Uh, um, uh, hey, Jude. Oh God. Hey, Jude, back. Thank you. <laughs> back to back in the set. Back to back in the set. When you're that great that you're like... Let's just put "Hey Jude" and and let it be back to back because we can we gotta play you know all this other, we gotta just play all these other songs we can, you know every single other artist in the world would be like okay we open the show with "Hey Jude" and then two hours later we're gonna play "Let It Be" and basically everything else is a beer break like no unbelievable. Well, your buddy Richard Marks, I want to say, I'm not complaining because everyone left happy, but he did not play Hold On to the Nights or Angelia. And I, it, it's a nice luxury to be able to do 90 minutes and not play those two, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the truth of the matter is for him now, I mean, if you think about his catalog, uh, he is, I mean, he's got so many hits. He's got so many classic songs that he's going to, there's no question about it. Some people are going to leave disappointed. I, we did a show uh, in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. And at the end of the show, at the end of the night, a guy came up to me. There's a song off of Everything You Want called Finding Me, which, yes. is not a, which was not a single. But it is a song that, 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 that some people really like. And I, I, really, I really like that song, too. For whatever reason, we had to take it off the set list. I think there was a question about the timing of our set, and we wanted to make sure that that the 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 the, the promoter, the the organizers had that the you know we we couldn't go over, we couldn't go long, and so that song, for whatever reason, that night got taken out of the set list. And sure enough, I'm meeting some people after the show, and he's like, "You didn't play Finding Me? What the heck?" How can, how can you not play Finding Me? And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> how, I, you know, and then of course I'm like, I should have just left that one in and taken off one of the other songs, but then I would have had someone come up to me. You didn't play, you know, I'm still here. How can you not play? I'm still here, you jerk. Uh, it's a funny, it's a funny <laughs> position to be in, but Angelia is probably my favorite Richard Mark song. And Hold On To The Nights might be my second favorite Richard Mark song, although it's tough, man. He's got... He's got so many great ones. And for me, you know, we're, we're dear, dear friends. I, I, I love him like a brother. Um, uh, but he and I have written songs together. And it's like, it's, it's crazy, you know, uh, to sit down in a room with a guy of that, of, of that, of that level of talent uh, and to feel that comfortable in the room with someone like that. That's, that's the other thing. You know, you've got this deep, deep friendship uh, and then intense admiration. Um, but ultimately, you sit down, and it's so it's it's it's, an, it's inherently a comfortable writing environment. You know, you know this guy can do it without you. So, like, you know, you can you can you, you know, it's not like it's going to be playing tennis against into the void. You know, there goes another ball <laughs> out into the void. But yeah, it's like coming right back at you, and it's probably going to get some spin and some heat, and you're going to oh, it's okay, fine, you know. But uh, we have a great time writing together, and he's he's. He's amazing. He's the real deal. He's the real deal. 
Yeah, a few more things with you. I appreciate your time. During his concert, sure. he had he was playing videos in the background, and you appeared in a decent amount of those videos that he was yeah. showing throughout the show. Like there, there's Matt, there's Vertical Horizon, they're coming, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and yeah. I love those. It's up on YouTube. You guys got together. I think it was Richard Marks and friends for some big show. You came out yeah. just two guys, two acoustic guitars, uh, doing "You're a God" and and some of the other hits. It was terrific. Thank you. Yeah, we, we've done um, two records as a duo, acoustic duo. Um, they're out there in the world. I'm not sure how, how easy or hard they are to find, but but um, but we've done shows together. We've done some touring, I, I, you know, with that sort of line, that lineup, that that or, you know, whatever, that style, whatever. Yeah. And uh, man, it's just a joy because you're just hanging out with your buddy laughing all night long. We just we just laugh and then we sing a song and then we start laughing about something else. And then we sing we're like, oh boy, we got to sing another song here. Um, just really, really fun. And, and it is cool and, and amazing for me to be included in those those videos, the video component of his shows. And, you know, it. he's what can I say? I mean, he's 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 one of my favorite people and easily one of my uh, uh, favorite singers songwriters, musicians, producers. I mean, I can't give them enough accolades. It can't be done. He's, yeah, he's, all the hits like he wrote said, for NSYNC and uh, uh, you know, dude, all, goes on and ass. on and on. It, yeah. where, so you literally closed out the 90s. And um, the 90s yes. for me, are, <laughs> I, I don't know how you felt early on, the Nirvana Pearl Jam thing. It was such more, it was so kind of downtrodden and uh, not as happy as the late 80s and the yeah. Motley Crue and Girls, Girls, Girls and Pour Some Sugar on Me, Def Leppard, all that stuff. I yeah. mean, I liked it. I, I got on board with it. But then somewhere there was a sweet spot and then there was some other darker stuff, Tool and Corn and all that. But then mm -hmm. the Gin Blossoms and and Everclear and Sugar Ray mm -hmm. and then you you kind of felt you you found that sweet spot with some melody and some rock, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a fair point. I mean, I loved the '80s, loved it. I mean, I, I mean, I loved the hair metal stuff. I loved bands like Rat. Um, you know. Uh, Winger, I love Winger. I love you know Motley Crue. I love all I, I, you know not all this stuff, but a lot of the stuff. And the guitar players were were ripping awesome guitar players. But I also love The Cure, and I love you know New Order and Depeche Mode. You know those 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 bands were were killing it in the eighties as well. And um and so 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 that was a, that was an incredibly fertile time for amazing, amazing music, the cars. Um, I mean, the list is just endless. And you're right, everything did get kind of a little bit dark coming in Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana. It took me a minute to kind of like, okay, we're changing gears here. We're really sad about it. <laughs> All right, hold on. And, um, but, it, but, it, but it touched me, um, you know, that as a, as a sort of shift, I could relate to those, you know, a lot of those feelings as well. But you're right, yeah, it it it, it sort of did did kind of get a little bit uh, happier. Counting Crows came came into the picture, um, yeah, and and so so we for many years were were just an acoustic duo, Vertical Horizon, um, and uh, my myself and Keith Kane, we we kind of traveled around the the. The, the country um, with just a, two, you know two acoustic guitars and and um, I had played in rock bands growing up so 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 that format of just two guys two, two acoustic guitars was foreign for me felt almost inherently like a stop along the way rather than the journey and then sort of as as soon as as, as I slash we could we started bringing in other players we started shifting things a little bit and then. And then kind of I, I sort of blossomed, I think, as a songwriter. And, and, and mostly when I started to try to incorporate some of, of, of my love for rock music and, and stuff like that. I mean, if, in a way, it's like if you if I'm I'm kind of like Rush on one hand and James Taylor on the other. It's like those two, you know, disparate items, you know, influences <laughs> kind of like fused together, like, okay, whoa, you know, then my bald head sticks up out, out of that. <laughs> well, not to interrupt but, you, but you played with Neil Peart, right? The late Neil Peart. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he, um, 
it's still hard for me to talk about him because I love him so much. And he, he, uh, he really was, was, was my big brother. He was, uh, yeah. you know, they say, don't meet your heroes. Rush is my favorite band of all time. Um, and, uh, and they say, don't meet your heroes, but, um, with those three guys, uh, you know, that old adage fails. They were, they, they are getting Alex and, and Neil was, um, uh, 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 tremendous, uh, uh, you know, they're tremendous human beings, and and it's um, very, 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 very painful that that he's gone. So, but he he um, yeah, he and I um, uh, collaborated. We wrote a song called "Even Now," which is on on the um, you know, on the Echoes from the Underground record. Uh, and after we did that collaboration, I asked him if he would play drums on it. And I remember sort of looking up into his eyes, like, I'm like, oh, gosh, did I cross the line? And, and he sort of pointed down, he's a huge guy, pointed down at me in big, deep voice. He's like, no one else can play drums on that song. And I thought, well, this is the coolest thing ever. So so we went over to Capitol and uh, and he... He tracked that song and a few, actually a few others on that record as well. And, and then um, came back and, and played on, uh, uh, or maybe I'm getting the order mixed up, but he played on Burning the Days as well. Um, yeah, it, astounding, you know, absolutely astounding. For me to have my favorite drummer in the world, um, my favorite lyricist in the world who played in my favorite band in the world, um, play music on, on our records and, and, and contribute to our records. I, I'll, I can't, I can't even, I still can't believe it. Um, but mostly, yeah. mostly the, the, the deepest thing, oh gosh, it, it gets me still. The deepest thing is that um, he was my friend, you know, he, he was, he was my friend. And, and so that, um, that's the, that's the real beauty. That's the, that everything else can go away because I, I, I had, uh, I had and have, I still talk to him almost every day um a, a, an incredible friend so yeah, yeah still gets me real quick not that you care but so i'm a huge van halen freak right okay here's oh, one of my sweet van, one of my van hagar i love this picture here i'm a big i'm a huge sammy right. fan i don't diss sammy i actually like him more than dave but uh get it. i get it i get it <laughs> uh your initials are vh i can't think yes. of another band who's vh like van yes. halen was right yes I have a great story about that. All right. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> so um, I had become friendly with Matt Bruck, who now is running the, uh, I think, running the EVH brand with, with Wolfie um, in some capacity. I'm not exactly sure how, how all that works. But, but Matt was uh, Eddie's guitar tech uh, and so much more. For, for years and years and years, excuse me, through John Shanks, who produced the Go record, I met Matt and we became friendly. And I bought a few, uh, he helped me find a few old Marshall amps because I, I my favorite amps in the world are, are these vintage Marshall Plexi amps and Eddie famously uh, played them for, for a very, very long time. Um, but uh, he had, Matt invited me up to the studio to 5150. So I, I, I went over there. I think we were checking out an amp that he had that he was, he want, you know, I was interested in. And of course, it's a temple, right? You know, Ben Halen. Um, yeah. I, I too love the Sandy era. Uh, I love the Dave era. I, I, you know, it's tomato, tomato for me. I, I love it all. Um, but, um, um, it's funny. I remember learning how to play uh, Cabo Wabo on, uh, on Very nice. OU812 and just freaking out about how cool that that guitar that guitar riff was. But um, but I'm in in 5150, and then all of a sudden the door opens and Alex walks in, and Alex is you know like Neil height, you know a giant of a man, right? And Matt introduces me to Alex, and and Alex who again looks down at me. And he points at me and he goes, oh, so you're in the other VH. <laughs> and so from that moment on, like I've sort of felt like it's okay for us to refer to ourselves, at least internally as VH. And, and, but yeah, yeah, there's one, there's only one VH, let's be clear. It's Van Halen. And then we're like, they're like the, 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 the distant 
cousins, you know, twice <laughs> removed. You know, we live down the hill, like, you know, in a much smaller house. And we, we're lowercase VH. Yeah, they're capital VH. They're capital VH with wings that go around the world. And we're like mini lowercase VH in like one point font. Hey, look, if the 10 year old self of you could have imagined Alex Van Halen's going to walk in the room and know who I am and know my band, yeah. that would, you know, that would make it right. Dude, uh, 100%. 100%. It's been a heck of a journey. I'm so grateful. You know, I really, really am. Well, my recording is about to run out in three minutes. I appreciate yeah. all the time uh outstanding stuff with you matt um okay so our show is august the 19th at the varsity theater of baton rouge louisiana we're red rock and blue we benefit louisiana military charities like blue star mothers of louisiana support our war heroes um wounded war heroes for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice what can fans expect to see you're going to play all the hits you're going to mix in some new stuff maybe a cover or two uh tell us about yeah. the show yeah, so we'll play the songs. Uh, hopefully, we'll, if anyone wants to hear a song, we're going to play it. And if not, talk to me about it after the show. Give me <laughs> grief. Um, but one of the things that, that for me, um, it, the most important shows I've ever played in my career have been shows for the military. Uh, we've been fortunate to tour all over the world playing shows for the men and women who serve our country. Um, the first time I went over to Iraq with lowercase vh, um, uh, I saw a, a woman walking across, a soldier walking across the, the, the square, uh, and um, uh, she had her uh, her uniform on, and M4 was slung over her shoulder, her helmet, everything. And it was 120 degree heat, and she was walking through this, this, this it was like it was nothing. And I thought, well, I'm going to write a song for her. And so, um, so we'll play a song uh, on the, uh, the, the 19th, a song called Song for Someone that I wrote for her that is really a, a song for all the men and women who serve our country um, and also the people who, who love them, people who miss them while they're out there um, uh, 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 do, you know, um, doing their, their tour of duty. Um, but, the, but yeah, the people, the people who do those jobs and then, you know, the people who have sacrificed their lives for us. Like there's no guy, there's no bald guy singing songs without them, right? There's no, there's no uh, 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 going out and grabbing a hamburger with, without, 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 without them. And so um, fundamentally, as we breathe a breath, we need to be yeah, grateful to these people who protect us and keep our world spinning around. So we'll show a lot of, of gratitude to them that night. We'll play some songs. We'll have some laughs. We'll have some fun. And uh, I'm really, really grateful to you for booking us and for, for uh, bringing us there, giving us the opportunity. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Great interview. I look forward to meeting you in person. Me too. Thanks, Jacques. Thank you, Matt.